Hey guys, it's Joe, and this is a short clip from episode 3.36 of Dinner Table Talks. A little bit of context, we've been talking about blue zones, five pockets around the world where there's a high concentration of people that live to be 100 years old and older. This week, while flipping through a cookbook, The Blue Zone's Kitchen, 100 Recipes to Live to 100, Aislinn found a great story about the Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, one of the five blue zones. And what do they eat every morning for breakfast? Tortillas, beans, and rice. And that got us thinking about South Texas, where we live. And this is an edited version of that conversation. But the one thing that I want to point out as you're listening to this is that one of the things that we're often conditioned to believe, and I've talked a lot about this recently, about the stories and where did that story come from, where has that story led us to, and what has it gotten us to then believe about what is occurring today. Coming out of the healthcare system, coming out of the rise in pediatric diabetes, I remember when the conversation about type 2 diabetes in children was becoming an epidemic, that was the conversation. This is an epidemic, right? And then what ended up happening was there was a lot of like cultural blaming that started occurring, especially in South Texas, because culturally here in South Texas, we eat tortillas, beans, rice. Like, And also culturally in South Texas, the stories that we have been told mm-hmm. and what appears to be anecdotally true is that like these blue zones are pockets of health, mm-hmm. that South Texas down to the valley and the Mexico border. Right. Is this pocket of obesity, Uh diabetes, Uh and that's the story that... That's being told. That's being told, but appears to be true. Well, I mean, there's certainly parts of it that are true. I mean, as much as I have looked into, studied, and been aware of South Texas health and lifestyle, I've seen some of the things that they're talking about. There's no doubt about that. And then there was some conversation at the dinner table last night that talked about how they moved the benchmark. So what was considered diabetic before isn't considered diabetic anymore or vice versa, or there's so many more people that are considered. Right. Pre-diabetes is normalized. Right. And really what I know about being there in the healthcare industry when that shift was starting to occur was that the doctor, the endocrinologist was simply trying to encourage people to stop drinking so many soda waters Mm -hmm. and stop, you know, whatever. But somehow it becomes this cultural story about how it's because we eat tortillas and beans Mm -hmm. and we eat breakfast and we, you know, whatever. Cheap cheese. So I read this this morning and I was like, we're going to free the taco today. And I loved it. He said, I may have found the world's healthiest breakfast. It's tucked away in Nicoya, Costa Rica. Early in the morning at 4 a.m., A bunch of women are stoking the wood fires in long clay ovens. They put on cauldrons of spicy beans to boil, and they mix corn dough, nixtamal, with wood ash, according to an ancient technique dating back to at least 8,000 years ago. Wood ash in the tortilla. That's what they're saying. Interesting. One of the women pinches off a golf ball-sized piece of dough on a piece of waxed paper and rotates it with mechanical precision into a perfectly round patty. Mm. She immediately slaps it onto a hot clay plate or a comal. Immediately when I started reading that, I was like, she's making tortillas. Yeah, and totally. I'm like, oh. So she roasts this beautiful tortilla until it gets into this puffy disc and then it collapses into a tortilla. At the other end of the wood stove, three other women mix beans with onions, red peppers, and local herbs. Mm -hmm. The beans cook slowly for about an hour to tender perfection and are then mixed into rice to produce the uniquely Costa Rican gallo pinto, rice and beans. Okay, now we've got tortillas, rice, and beans. At 6 a.m., the first customer files in. Most of them market vendors or laborers. They take seats on benches at long green tables. Sounds like a taco truck to me. Yeah. (laughs) It sounds like every corner in our town. Exactly. Cooperative waitresses wearing simple dresses and flip-flops serve giant cups of weak local coffee, steaming plates of the gallo pinto, and baskets of warm tortillas. As muddy ranchero music plays from a distant radio, customers fill their tortillas with beans topped with Chilero hot sauce. This is arguably the most perfect food combination ever. And for some, it brings forth tears of joy. I can imagine that. The corn tortillas, chewy with nutty flavor, are an excellent source of a whole grain, low glycemic, complex carbohydrates. The wood ash breaks down the corn's cell walls, making niacin bioavailable and freeing amino acids so the body can absorb them. 
That's a whole lot of science about plants and lifestyle and how our body takes in different nutrients based on how we do different the things The science of the taco, if you will. Exactly. The black beans contain the same pigment based in anthocyanins, antioxidants, we've heard that before, that are found in blueberries. They're rich, colon cleansing, blood pressure lowering, and insulin regulating, and they are filled with folates like potassium and B vitamins to boot. The bean and rice combination creates a whole protein, which is to say all the amino acids necessary for human sustenance. It goes on to talk about the coffee and the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant and anti-cancer properties of coffee and the curcumin that's in the seasoning and the chilero that's made with vinegar and carrots. We make the vinegar carrot hot sauce, the Belizean style. They're, They're getting some probiotics in their diet. Yep. Total cost of the breakfast, $4.23, a very nice price to discover Nicoya's secrets to longevity. Free the taco! Well, so there's an interesting dichotomy there because the taco that I pick up at the taqueria doesn't feel like it's bursting with health. Are they talking about lard in their tortillas? I'm talking about the mass-produced rice, beans, tortillas available in the American market. There's a couple of things going on here. One of those is labeling cultures. The way you eat is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that certainly is what they say about South Texas and the Valley. Right. And it's not about the fact that it's the American processed diet that's potentially causing the issues. It's about that your culture of... Tortillas, beans, and rice, and chile breakfast Mm -hmm. is not healthy. Your culture is not healthy. And that's some of the wording that is, it becomes a thing that denigrates cultures and people and makes it easy to kind of like pick on people and, and things like that. But the thing about it is, is that it's not about the separate ingredients. It's not about the culturally appropriate food as it seems to appear in this particular story, right? In this story, it's not about the food, the cultural food. It's about the way the food is prepared. And in America, it's prepared for highly, highly cheap commoditization and distribution. Right. Which doesn't have anything to do with the basic original ingredients that were formulated 800 years ago and were used on an island to the point where now they have some of the oldest, healthiest people on the island and they eat that for breakfast every morning. These are important conversations to be had about why we create the stories that we create. And let's break that, break it down and talk about some of the other stories that can help us get a better understanding of what is going on with our health globally amongst us. Want to hear more? Be sure to listen to this week's episode on Dinner Table Talks.